we're at uh, seven minutes before three o'clock. The talk of Sioux Falls, 11.40 KSOO. Rick Noe will be down at the uh, Washington Pavilion. Glenn Campbell is performing here two nights in a row uh, with the South Dakota Symphony. I really enjoy playing with symphonies, and uh, I'm sure the South Dakota Symphony is probably the cream of the crop of musicians in South Dakota in the orchestra. But you got to be pretty dead gum good and be able to read very well to play with a symphony. This is Glenn Campbell. For those who don't know, Glenn Campbell. Thank you. It's nice to be here. Of course, it's nice to be anywhere. I love playing with big orchestras. It just, it brings something out that's just so beautiful. Everything is so full and lush. And it actually makes me sing better. She flies golden sails across the sky. One of the things about Glenn, he can sing anywhere, standing up, laying down. I remember we were doing the basic album. He was trying different techniques of singing. And I come in one day into the control booth, and there's Glenn laying down in what appeared to be a coffin-like box. And he was thinking that he could sing really good on his back. I've never seen anybody lay down in what looked like a coffin and start singing, but he did it great. The moon can be so cold. It's been um, a wonderful experience to be with somebody like Glenn Campbell. I can't imagine being with any other artist that is, to me, as, as high up in the echelon of singing and playing as Glenn Campbell. Glenn is one of those guys that has so much experience at every level of this business. I mean, he's been around presidents and kings and queens. He's been around everybody from Bob Hope to you name it. And uh, there's nobody he doesn't know that he hasn't worked with. I mean, John Wayne and on and on and on. I remember doing and uh, writing their charts out for, chord, chord charts out for the Irish Rovers, you know. And the humpback oh, was the unicorn. It was a humpty back camel. And I would go from something like that into a Frank Sinatra session, into a Beach Boy session, into a Jan and Dean session. We'll be uh, riding in the tour bus somewhere and then we're listening to the radio and he says, oh, I was on that, oh, I was on that one, oh, I'm on that one. I go, my right, gosh, everything from the Beach Boys, Frank Sinatra, Andy Williams, I mean, it, it doesn't end. I was recently having dinner with Don McLean and <clears throat> we were just talking about just different things and somehow we, we came up, we. We, we started talking about Glenn, and I said to him, you know the guitar lick, Strangers in the Night? And he said, yeah. He said, I said, that's Glenn Campbell. That's what I played on that record. I played the melody along with it. Something in your eyes was so exciting. Uh, Dean Martin was probably the most fun to work with. Uh, well, the Beach Boys, they were, always, they were always a lot of fun because there was always a lot of arguing going on. Now that part goes like this, you know. And I actually got to sing with the, with the group on record, too. And Pet Sounds was a watershed album. It was a, it was a great moment in pop music in the 60s. To think that Glenn Campbell was on that album, it was such an important album and he's on it. There's several cuts when, when he's there, and, and if any player that they used on that album had to be incredible or they wouldn't be on there, and Glenn's one of those players. Thank you very much. I am Glenn Campbell, and I'm happy to be here. It's knowing that your door is always open and your path is free to walk. Well, doing the Good Time Hour was a wonderful experience for me, and I'm so thankful to Tommy Smothers for putting me in that. You know, the Glenn Campbell Good Time Hour was something I grew up with, and I was a kid 
you know, that was something I watched every week. And I think it was an important television because the type of recording artists they had on there. I think the writers were great. I mean, the skits were funny. The writing was so good with Steve Martin, with Rob Reiner, my gracious Mason Williams. What a great head writer he was for the show. But other than that, it was something where it really struck the uh, pulse of uh, America all across the board. I mean, young and old watched that show because he had everybody on that show. Well, through his television show, he introduced a lot of people to country music and, and bluegrass and, and country pop music. Uh, people, you know, never would have seen that kind of music unless Glenn's show had uh, brought that into the people's living rooms. He went to CBS said, I'd like to have a Willie Nelson or a Waylon Jennings or a Johnny Cash on the show. And CBS balked at first because that wasn't the demographic that they wanted, but Glenn insisted and brought them on and really forced it down CBS's throat. And uh, they did well. I was, uh, had Don Ho as a guest on The Good Time Hour. And Don gave me a 45 record. He said, uh, I didn't have any luck with this. Maybe you'd like it. It's a Jimmy Webb song. And he had done it as a ballad. Galveston, oh Galveston. You know, typical Don Ho type of thing. Well, when I, I didn't think too much of it until I wrote the lyrics out, and I said, oh, it was such a song for the times. Uh, I cleaned my gun and dreamed of Galveston. It's about the soldier that's, and all the guys that were off in Vietnam, you know. Galveston, oh Galveston. He actually wrote the song about the Spanish-American War. He was sitting on the beach in Galveston, and that's where, you know, the bunkers, the stuff that the, the cannons were in were still there. Uh, I don't know if they are now or not. Jimmy wrote the song in, like, 67, probably. In my heart and my mind and my taste, I go back to the Jimmy Webb uh, song. Jimmy Webb is uh, one of the best, best songwriters. I think that he's as good as I've ever heard. Thank you, Jimmy Webb. By the time I get to Phoenix, she'll be rising. The way Glenn interprets songs especially Jimmy Webb songs. He is the master interpreter of Jimmy Webb songs. They're like a great team uh, the, through the ages. I mean, if you, you're talking about um, McCartney and Lennon of the Beatles, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, Glenn Campbell and Jimmy Webb, the, they go together. And the way Glenn interprets those songs, uh, it's like a bird flying. It's like somebody that's just breathing. It's easy for him. I mean, he understands exactly what Jimmy wants. Jimmy Webb masterpiece. I was a highwayman along the coach roads I did ride with sword and pistol by my side. And what does do more Jimmy Webb do? I am the lineman for the town. And I drive the main road. I got a, a letter from the guys from the, from the Wichita. The USS Wichita was a supply ship. And they'd meet in the Gulf of Tonkin uh, in, off the coast of Vietnam. And one of the ships would have, <laughs> the Galveston would have Galveston blaring on their the speakers. And <laughs> the USS Wichita would have Wichita blaring on the speakers. That really, <laughs> Like he said, it's a wonder we only got blown out of out of the water, man. Cause he's supposed to be quiet out there. And I need you more than want you. And I want you full time. Girl, I want you full time. It's still I love Wichita Lineman. Dad has done so many Jimmy Webb songs, and Jimmy is such a great poet, and Dad has that way of bringing those songs out. I know all the words to every song on every album, probably. Don't take this heaven from one 
My daughter, Debbie, uh, she's been working with me now, I guess, 10 years, nine or 10 years. Uh, she wanted to sing. I said, great, come on out. I didn't really have any musical interest. Well, maybe I did, but I was too busy raising kids, being a mom and all that. And then in 1987, um, Dad was doing the fair in Phoenix, and I said, can I sing with you? And he goes, sure. And I, didn't, I don't think I was expecting him to say sure. So then I did, and I've just been kind of singing with him ever since. She, she takes care of me like I was her kid. It's amazing. And I do take care of him, you know, I, like I went in and woke him up at 11.30 today and said, okay, it's time to get up. We've got an hour and they're coming to get us. Uh, what do you want to eat? And then I'll go in my room and I'll order his food for him. And then if he needs anything ironed, I'll iron it. And, you know, I'm just, and I love it. I mean, I love it. That's my dad, you know, and I love him. And if that's not loving me, then all I've got to say God didn't make the little green apples and it don't rain in Indianapolis in the summertime. Well, it's pretty evident with Glenn and Debbie that there's a lot of love in the family and these two are enjoying themselves on stage all the time. Uh, Debbie started doing this back in the early 90s when we were in Branson coming out and singing with us and it went along so well that she's become a permanent fixture in the show. People love seeing her come out. They really enjoy what she brings to the show. And the fun thing is that when these guys get to giving it to each other, it's hilarious. They ad-lib everything they're doing, and it's not like a set thing that somebody wrote. It's just them being themselves. And I think that's the special magic. It's just all the love and then the kidding on top of it. It really becomes a whole lot of fun. Having family out on the road when you, and you're at, and Glenn's on the road an awful lot, has, has made it much more comfortable for him. And uh, he didn't spend that much time with her when she was young, because he was always on the road working away from his family, and now, uh, he's sort of making up for all that lost time, and they've got a great relationship. It is, it is really, really nice that uh, she's out there. It's good for her, and it's good for him. And it's good for all of us, because uh, he's got somebody to take care of him. As far as mine and Dad's relationship, we really didn't have one probably until about six, seven years ago. I mean, we had one, but not as we know it now, a father and daughter relationship. I don't think Dad really knew how to be a dad, and I didn't know how to be a kid, you know? I mean, we didn't have that opportunity because there's always so many people around. And now it's just me and him on the road and our hotel rooms adjoin. He, he comes in my room at will, changing my channels if he doesn't like what I'm watching. You know, I mean, he's, it's, we're best friends. We have a great relationship now, which, you know, we didn't have growing up because I, we didn't spend a lot of time together. So it's, it's wonderful now. When myself is feeling low, I think about your face aglow and ease my mind. Glenn is a great guy. He's a, just a great guy. He's a hilarious comedian. Hi, I'm Glenn Kendall. He's a funny guy when he gets in. He, he can do Walter Brennan. Well, of course, you've seen him do uh, Donald Duck. <laughs> you have to get kind of far away from him because, you know, the spray. <laughs> Okay, Glenn, go ahead and do it. I'm about 10 feet away, okay? I love silly humor. And I quit smoking about uh, nine years ago, I guess now, because you see, I heard that people from Arkansas don't inhale, so why smoke? Roger Miller was a dear friend of mine. He'd say things like, you can lead a horse to water, but get him to lay on his back and float, and you got some. <laughs> but, and, uh, he said things like, he said his, his wife, when he got married, was such a bad cook, a swarm of flies got together and fixed the screen door. <laughs> oh, and he does a great um, impersonation of a bagpipe, he thinks. You know, he'll go, hey, watch this, guys. He goes, I could play bagpipe with my mouth. Could you hear? Did that come on the sound? And you know, I'm sitting there going, yeah, 
Yeah, Glenn, that, that sounds like a bagpipe. <laughs> I, I learned to do that when I was a kid. When you're, when you're raised on the farm, you know, and there's, you don't have electricity and you don't have an indoor plumbing, there, you, you just you make up things to do. I'm one of 12 kids, and my dad's, on my dad's side, he had like probably eight brothers and four sisters, and my mom too. Everybody just had a lot of kids. That's probably because there wasn't no electricity and everybody went to bed early. Because well, I didn't have electricity when I was a kid down there in Arkansas. We had to watch TV by candlelight. That was a drag. No. He's the epitome of the all-American dream. I mean, to, to grow up in a, in a small little town in, in uh, Arkansas and to, to, to go from that town to um, having your own network show and, and, and instantly recognizable hit records, that, that, that's an amazing accomplishment. What is the biggest compliment that's ever been given to you? I would say uh, Guitar Player Magazine uh, made me the number one guitar player on their list uh, one month, so that was a big compliment. Mm -hmm. To the music world, I think Dad's greatest contribution is his um, guitar playing ability. If I really want to get into a good playing mood, I put on Django Reinhardt and Stefan Grappelli, because uh, he just played. You know, just, he was just a bad player. Glenn is one of those guitar players that everybody looks up to. Um, everybody we've met on the road that's a hot player will tell us the same story. They grew up watching him on TV or they've always looked up to him. They respect his studio playing. Uh, what we hear so often is that Glenn is one of those underrated guitar players that people don't realize how many things he's done, how many sessions he's been on. And it's apparent when these people come around him how much they respect him and how much they uh, admire what he's done. His discography is just endless. And then to get to stand on stage with him night after night and uh, be with this guy has really been a great education for all of us and uh, myself especially as a guitar player. He's a daily butt whipping. <laughs> I think Glenn considered himself a guitar player first and then a singer. Uh, he started out playing the guitar uh, when he was five years old or right around then. Uh, it just comes so naturally to him. And if he ever goes, if he goes down in history, I think he would want to go down as a guitar player and musician. That's the most important thing to him. I think Glenn's greatest achievement is, is introducing uh, millions of people to guitar. I think that Glenn's greatest achievement is being able to sustain a career uh, over almost 40 years and still be as good today as he was the first time I heard him uh, in 1962. I've been very blessed to get to do what I have done. I've got to play with just about every kind of uh, artist and, and musician in the business. And then being an artist myself, the whole gauntlet has been run and getting to play with uh, with symphonies is just the icing on the cake for me.